Sino ang isasalang natin ngayon sa hot seat? I think that my and my colleagues are very different from us. You love him or you hate him, pero... Deko hindi, wala naman nag-hate siya. Good evening. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. At the start of the year, Environment Secretary Roy Simatu gave his marching orders to the DENR officials. The strict implementation of environmental laws is the number one priority of the department. And one of these laws concerns solid waste management. And the man who is responsible for making sure that the law is followed is our guest tonight. Under Secretary Benny Antiporda. Welcome to the hot seat, Yusek. Uh, thank you, ma'am, at uh, thank you sa ating mga kapanood. At uh, medyo ninenervous lang po ako dahil <laughs> hindi na po ako sanay sa ganito. <laughs> Oo nga, pero ito ang unang tanong. I heard that uh, you are calling yourself the basurero ng bayan, pero kinorek mo ako kanina, ano ba ang tama? Yeah, ang tawag po nila sa akin is uh, pambansang basurero po. Ano po? Agad uh, ba? Yes, kasi it stands for PBB. PBB? PBB, yeah. Okay, we, we've got this project, mm -hmm. the uh, PBB, which is the Pinas, the Basura Buster. Ito po yung mascot ng uh, DNR ngayon. And yung ililid niya po na project is the uh, pera sa basura ng bata. Mm -hmm. Yung mga bata, eh, matuturuan pong mag-ipo ng mga recyclables para maibenta ito mm -hmm. on a Saturday. And para ho sa Monday, eh, meron silang baon. So, nagsimula na po ito, yeah, Yusek Danny? It was Danny? launched uh, last January 26. Oh, ito lang, uh, yes, itong ito taon lang, lang po, na to? Okay. Opo, at uh, at the same time, uh, kaya rin po PBB dahil ang pambansang basurero nga po, si Benny. <laughs> okay. Alam mo, parang sabi nila, magandang pakinggan, ano? It's a nice title. But in reality, mabigat ang trabaho mo. Well, tama po kayo oh. dyan. Dahil alam naman po natin sa ating pong mga tahanan, buti pa po ang pangit. Meron po tayong tinatawag na the last, but not the least. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to basura, it is always the last and the least, no? Na least priority sa isang bahay na kung saan na uh, yung kultura po ng uh, karamihan po ng mga kababayan natin mm -hmm. is kapag lumagpas po ron sa bakura ng basura, eh, Wala na silang na ng gobyernong linisin ito. Wala na silang pak pakialam, yes. yes. di ba? So, yun po yung pinakamalaking problema natin, mm -hmm. yung kultura po ng Pilipinas. Okay, so you first came in, in uh, as you said, May 2018, tama yes, po ba? Yes, 2018 po. Oo, nung pumasok kayo uh, undersecretary, um, ano po ba yung uh, status at ano yung inyong dinatnan uh, doon sa DENR at that time? And ano yung uh, priorities, ano yung mga marching orders na binigay sa'yo ng ating Secretary si Matu? Well, since our Secretary was a former General no, and the Chief mm -hmm. of Staff of the AFP, well, pagdating na pagdating po natin, eh, para bang gyera agad yung mm -hmm. pinasukan natin, mm -hmm. kung saan na kasalukuyang kasasara lang po nung Boracay. Ah, so, yes, yes. So, immediately na palaban na po kagad tayo uh -oh. doon po sa mga bagay na kailangan natin gawin at uh, yung kautusan po ng ating Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ay uh, agad eh, ipinatutupad po dyan po sa Boracay na kung saan eh, ngayon ho eh, makikita natin ang linis nito. Yes. When uh, the uh, President uh, instructed DNR and all the other agencies, the Interagency Task Force, to uh, clean up Boracay because of the cesspool. Of course, the uh, Secretary Roy Simato, including Secretary Berna, Romulo Puyat, and Secretary uh, Ed Año, mm -hmm. recommended for its closure. Yes. So people thought that they're crazy. How yes. will they clean up Boracay? Mm -hmm. But now, success po ang nangyari. Oo nga. Kaya uh, again, nabigyan tayo ng bagong laban which mm -hmm. is Battle for Manila Bay. No po? That's right. Actually, yeah. um, Yusak Benny, nabanggit mo nga na medyo maraming nag, uh, nagtatanong kung ito ba ay pwede, eh, nasisira ba yung ulo ninyo dahil gagawin nyo yan, dahil sayang yung, yung uh, income na sinasabi nila, hindi ba? Pero of course, nung binuksan, nakita natin it's a good success story. Yes. And then, sabi mo nga ngayon, Manila Bay. Pero, bago mo sasagutin o bago mo sa amin ikukwento kung ano naman ngayon ang sa Manila Bay, magbabalik po kami dyan lamang po kayo.
Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. Our guest for tonight is DENR Undersecretary Benny Antiporda. And uh, before the break, uh, Yusek Benny, we have a uh, hanging question or a hanging issue. And this time, gusto mo naman ikwento sa amin ng sa Manila Bay, di ba? Eh, ang sabi ni Secretary Simatu, or ang order niya is a daily cleanup. Yes. Kaya ba yun? Ano ba nangyayari? Yes, so uh, what's happening now in DNR is uh, bawat uh, office, eh, meron pong toka for the day na maglilinis po, magkaroon ng coastal cleanup dito po sa may Baseco area. So, so what do you mean bawat office? Bawat, bawat agency? Bawat department? No, bawat office po ng DNR. Ah, so, so ibig mo sabihin, halimbawa HR, halimbawa... Yes, Everybody will have their time cleaning the bay. Na po. Mm -hmm. Ang uh, katwiran po ng ating butihing kalihim is uh, para ho maramdaman ng bawat isa kung ano talaga yung pakiramdam na nililinis mo yung isang lugar at nakikita mong may linaw na. Mm -hmm. So tuloy-tuloy po ito and yet meron din pong pananaw ang ating pong ulihim na kapag hindi nilinis ang ating shoreline every day, it will be impossible for us to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Kung kaya't uh, ito po uh, bilang pa, uh, panimula ay uh, taong gobyerno naglilinis nito pero ang main objective po natin dito ay gisingin po yung mga tao sa paligid na yan. Gaya ho nandiyan sa Baseco na kailangan tumulong sila at uh, sumama na sa atin. So when did you start dun sa Baseco um, undersecretary? Yeah, we started last year. Uh, okay. Na, uh, last last year. Okay, so okay. 2018 yan. Yeah, so when 2018. you when you did since that time at ngayon, ano, uh, we started 2019 ng January 27. Okay, so hmm. ibig sabihin noon, one year, one, one year, year ago. Po. Opo, opo. So simula nung nagsimula kayo at hanggang ngayon, malaki ba ang pagbabago? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. it was a dump site before. Yes. Kung makikita niyo po yung tinatawag natin na dagat ng basura, yung mm -hmm. po yun. Mm -hmm. no po, but, dun, dun, uh, dun mo ba nakuha yung pangalan sa'yo? <laughs> <laughs> hindi naman po. Ta, makikita po natin na talagang uh, nakakadiri po siya. Mm -mm, no? At but, that time. Yes, as of now, uh, sa halip na tawagin na dagat ng basura, Baseco Beach na po ang tawag sa kanya. Dahil tunay naman na may beach naman doon. Yes, dun. may beach na po siya. Oh. But sad to say, hindi pa po siya maaring languyan. Oo. Oh, oh. Dahil uh, medyo mataas pa po yung coliform, coliform level yeah. niya. Where in dati, nung uh, inumpisahan po namin linisin yan, eh, part of the uh, bay, eh, may makukuha kang billions of coliform count. Ito naman is uh, millions, no? hundreds of millions. No? Mm -hmm. But as of now, uh, hundreds of thousands na lang siya. Pero ano ba yung acceptable um, undersecretary for... Sad to say, ang acceptable lang po sa atin is a maximum of 100 para safe po ah, sa ating okay. kanusugan. So nap napakalayo, napakalayo pa po, no? But uh, we can uh, see the drastic change uh, kapag na-implement na rin po yung uh, project na gagawin dyan ng ating pong kalihim na magkaroon siya ng sariling sewerage treatment plant wherein all of the outfalls na papunta roon sa Baseco Beach e eh dadaan po roon sa STP para mm -hmm. pagdating po ng tubig ASB eh quality na which is lesser than 100 uh, MPN. Oo. Yan po yung target natin. But kung titignan nyo po talaga eh, to see is to believe wala ng basurang nakalutang to smell is to believe wala ka ng maamoy na masangsang pero you need to test it. Yes. You need to test the coliform level of the water to make it sure na malinis po talaga siya. Mm -hmm. eh, And yun, alam mo, Yusek, part of the culture kasi ano, na siguro dahil sa katagalan ng panahon, especially for the residents there, eh, hindi kasi sila siguro naturuan na kailangan nilang pangalagaan yung kanilang uh, kapaligiran. So ngayon ba, part ba ng uh, uh, inyong uh, program is to help educate them, constantly educate and give them a sustainable um, livelihood para hindi sila babalik sa dati nilang ginagawa? Yes, uh, ganun po ang ginagawa namin. Tuloy-tuloy uh, po yung information and education campaign mm -hmm. po namin. Na po. Uh, if you will still uh, remember, in the past uh, administrations, yung IEC, si po eh, parang ginagawa lang na uh, for compliance purposes. Yes. But now talaga pong we hit it straight, straight to the heart mm -hmm. and straight to the brains of the people na mm -hmm. we need to do this to save the next generation. That's true. Pero apart from Baseco, even the establishments along the Ross Boulevard, hindi ba? Hindi yes. ba merong panahon na talagang nakita at napatunayan natin? They're one of the major pollutants. Yes, uh, no? that's why uh, as of now, the concentration will come from the upstream. Ito po yung galing sa mga este 
Caballeros, going to the Rivers, mm -hmm. then going to Manila Bay. Lahat po yan, sinuyod po namin ngayon. Lahat po yan, nakalatag na po tao namin. On the mobilization, kompleto na po tayo. So, rest assured na, hindi na po magkakaroon ng additional pollution. Mm -hmm. Yung po yung problema natin, linis tayo ng linis sa dulo, mm -hmm. dun sa taas naman. Mm -hmm. uh, Halasigin ng tapon na po. And at the same time, yung mga enforcement po namin, yung apprehension namin, mm -hmm. where in yours truly also participates in apprehension of uh, uh, establishments na violators, eh, napakarami na po nating uh, kinasuhan mm -hmm. at marami na rin po tayong inisyuhan ng uh, notice of violation. Yes. Limpak-limpak pong salapi ang kanilang uh, penalty. Data mararamdaman po nila yung sakit na ito dahil uh, ang ginawa po nila sa ating kalikasan ay hindi po mapapatawad ng ganun-ganun lang. Oo nga, pero actually, it's a two-way street eh. Uh, sila may kasalanan pero probably yung enforcement natin before of the existing laws were also lacking. That's why. Yes. Yan ang uh, totoo, hindi eh, ba, we, Undersecretary? We need to admit that because... Uh, We know, again, uh, let me reiterate, laging the last and the least eh, when it comes to yung tungkol sa mga basura yes. at mga duming ganyan. But now, uh, it's the uh, priority of our president. Kaya ho yan yung ginagalawan natin ngayon. And mm -hmm. uh, kamaumbakal po yung ginagamit namin. Mm -hmm. At uh, nakita nyo naman po sa Boracay kung gaano katindi yung resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, ginamit pa ho yung ating mga mambabatas para imbestigahan kami. But we stood still. Nag-survive po kami, na ilaban po namin, and yet ngayon napatunayan po namin sa kanila na yung anim na buwan e eh, worth it, no? Na tatlong doble ang kita nila ngayon dahil sa dami ng turista at magandang yung mga quality na mga tourist na dumarating. That, that's true, ano? So, ngayon, there is a clamor because of uh, the success of the Boracay, no? Meron ngayon clamor ang ibang mga tourism spots din natin, especially yung mga beach resorts, na dapat daw, eh, pagtuunan ng pansin yung iba din. Mm -hmm. Yun po bang mga ibang yun, eh, inyong tinitignan din with yes, regularity? Uh, just like in uh, El Nido, in uh, Siargao, in uh, Baguio City, yes. and even the Puerto Galera, Uh, sa Bohol, mm -hmm. sa Panglao, lahat po yan, pinasok na po natin mm -hmm. at uh, lahat po yan eh, sumusunod na ngayon, especially mm -hmm. on the easement rule. Yes. Ang easement rule po kasi natin is uh, meron po tayong tinatawag na 25 plus 5 yes. no? meters yung easement mula doon sa uh, shoreline. shoreline yes. uh, ho, kung kaya uh, kapag lumagpas ka riyan, abay gigibay nun namin eh, yung, yung, yung building. Merong mga iba na lumulusot, sabi nila, nung nagpatayo kami dito, eh, na, na, sumusunod kami sa tamang shoreline. Mm -hmm. Eh, kaso kinakain daw ng dagat. Ano well, uh, I beg to disagree because oh. we have this Namria map wherein uh, yung pong history ng dagat na yon ay meron po kami kahit na 50 so, years hindi, ago. So, hindi lumulusot hindi ganun? Hindi lumulusot ah, yun. hindi lumulusot. Oh, oh, oh. Tama naman. So, ngayon, ang tanong nila, is it gonna be safe to swim in Manila Bay someday? Meron ba kayong target na ganyan? And, uh, papano po ba yung mga inyong mga improvements or vision para maging tourist uh, spot Uh, ulit ang Manila Bay or a tourism magnet perhaps, especially because now, marami tayo ngayon nandito sa Manila area ng mga turista, hindi ba? Yes. May mga nagtatrabaho, hmm. hindi ba? Well, uh, kapag nangako po kami na bukas, eh pwede na yan, mm -hmm. abay, promises are made to be broken. But, uh, Kaya hindi kayo nangangako, ganoon? Yes, ganun? hindi po kami nangangako. <laughs> but one thing I can tell the people is uh, you can see a drastic change in the uh, water quality, mm -hmm. in the ambience of the sea, mm -hmm. uh, and especially yung uh, amoy niya. Mm -hmm. Yung to smell is to believe nga po yan. Uh, mm -hmm. Yan po masasabi natin. Right. And uh, yung drastic change na po yan, dahil as of now, yung sinasabi ko pong STP, doon po sa Baywalk area natin, meron na po. Meron na ngayon. Opo, meron ah, po tayo. Existing. And yet, uh, when we started cleaning up uh, Manila Bay, eh, lahat po yan hindi swimmable eh. But we have identified two sites already. Yung Agaw uh, Agawan Beach in, uh, in Sambales. Mm -hmm. Ah, in, I think in Bataan. Bataan. Agawan okay. Beach. Swimmable na po siya. Mababa dati ba hindi? Yes, dati po hindi siya mm -hmm. swimmable. Well, swimmable siya to the sense na hindi po alam ng tao na mataas po yung coliform level. I see. But now, swimmable siya as in swimmable, safe to uh, human swimming, 
human dipping, di ba po? Uh, rito po sa atin sa Maynila, yun din po yung objective natin. Tama. Na ika nga, eh, meron po tayong mga mayayaman o mga mas pinagpala na kayang pumunta sa malalayong lugar para mag-swimming. Mm -hmm. Ang isa pong ordinaryong Juan de la Cruz ay maaari na pong mag-swimming din in the future dyan po sa ating Manila Bay Area, dito mm -hmm. naman sa Baywalk at Baseco Beach. Actually, that's, uh, that's very good to hear because uh, a long time ago, yung mga generations past, they were saying that uh, one of the primary tourist destinations is uh, our Manila Bay, famous for the sunset, L and uh, famous po. for... Mm. Oh, kasama ang Luneta, hindi mm. ba? So, yung buong strip na yan, hindi ba? So, ang tanong ko naman ngayon dyan, after ninyo, kasi hindi natin masabi, minsan bumabalik ka sa old ways, eh, no? If you are not uh, careful, uh, merong mga ibang panukala, sabi nila, bakit hindi tayo maglagay ng environment police? Or some sort of, uh, ano, ano po ba ang... Well, as of now, we have heard thousands of... Uh environmental marshals, yung stero warriors po na tinatawag. Eh, but, but these are volunteers. Ah, hindi yung volunteers. Ah, Talagang, hinire po sila ng DNR talaga para bantayan po yung estero mm -hmm. na nasasakupan ng barangay nila. And mm -hmm. at the same time, sila rin po yung tutulong na maglinis. So, if there's one person who will lead the clean up, definitely people will come in and help us. Ugali po ng Pilipino yan, yung pusong bayanihan. Kung kaya uh, kailangan lang po natin eh, may magsisimula na po. Yes. Kung kaya ngayon, uh, though hindi po ganun kalaki ang pondo ng DNR, pero kahit paano nagawan po natin ang paraan na ma-encourage natin yung mga tao, suportahan tayo dito sa ginagawa natin. Dito naman po sa karagatan, ang nakikita po natin is talaga pong kailangan magkaroon ng management group. Mm -hmm. na magtutuon lang po ng pansin. Gaya po nung ginawa natin sa Boracay ngayon, sa Boracay po kasi, uh, ang naglinis po, ang gumawa po ng talagang matrabaho dyan is uh, the Boracay Interagency Task Force. Right, right. But uh, we're coming up with the, uh, with the law that will create a management group that will take care of Boracay mm -hmm. na talagang masustain yung... O pong, only for Boracay? Uh, yung sa Boracay lang po. Kasi oh, talagang billion po ang ginastos ng gobyerno dyan. Mm -hmm. And uh, hindi ho namin hahayaang masayang yan. Kapag tayo po yung natapos sa administrasyong ito. Oo nga. Kasi sayang naman yung uh, lahat ng hirap at pagod na ginawa, hindi ba? So, now, regarding sa garbage disposal, eh, meron din, of course, lahat yan tinitignan nyo, kaya nga umiikot kayo ng bansa, hindi ba? Uh, isa sa panukala is that yung sabi nyo, dapat may 10-year solid waste management plan. Opo. But not everybody can comply, eh. Yusek Benny. Pero, teka muna, bago masagutin ulit yan, pipigilan muna kita ulit. The Hot Seat will be right back. Stay with us. Mga isyong pinag-uusapan. Mga palitang laman ng pahayagan. Impormasyong dapat nyong malaman. Tatalakayin. Pupusisiin. Ihimaye ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face Off! Good evening and welcome back to the Hot Seat. Our guest for tonight is the ENR Undersecretary uh, Benny Antiporda and of course, Medyo umiinit na tayo ngayon ng usapan natin kasi ngayon hindi lang sa Manila Bay. Ang usapan natin ngayon, yung basura sa paligid nyo, hindi ba? And uh, like we said, the garbage disposal uh, system that uh, has been proposed, e paano yan yung sa 10-year solid waste management plan? Like I said, not everybody can comply. So ano yung uh, inyong nakikita ang solusyon dito? Well, uh, kasi ho, uh, hindi naman po natin na isisi ito sa batas dahil lang talaga may problema rito, ay taong bayan mismo, no po? But again, the government can do uh, everything para ma-maximize yung ating pong uh, mitigation when it comes to the looming problem of the solid waste yes. management. First, yung tinatawag natin na uh, segregation at source, yeah. no po? Hindi rin ho na-implement ng maayos siya ng local mm -hmm. government. Bakit? Let's always remember that the barangay chairman and the mayors are under the mercy of the votes of their constituents. That's true. So how can you just apprehend them and tell them that yes. you go to jail because of this? Mm -hmm. So ang gagawin po natin is let the people police their own ranks. No po? Barangay 1, you look at barangay 2, barangay 2 will uh, 
look after barangay 3, barangay 3 will look after barangay 1. Mm -hmm. Ganon po ang gagawin natin ngayon, lagay tayo ng tigalaawang uh, environmental marshal na kapag hindi ka nagsegregate, sisitahin ka. Mm -hmm. pag, hindi ka pag hindi ka sumunod, titikitan ka. Pag hindi ka sumunod sa ticket, magkakaroon ka ng penalty. Mm -hmm. Pag ayaw mo ng penalty, papayagang ka naman, community service. Maglilinis ka every Saturday, kasama yung mga nagko-coastal cleanup, ang nakalagay sa damit mo, leader cleaner. In Tagalog, pasaway. <laughs> That's so, a shame campaign but, already. But, but are you, is it, is it uh, being enforced now? Uh, May, well, uh, I, 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 wala, eh. no, I'm encouraging the uh, local government so, to come see, up with ordinances. It, com it, yeah. uh, it comes down still to, um, to the, the local, local government. government. Yeah. So oh. now, if they can implement this, definitely there will be a big decrease on the uh, solid waste. No? Kasi, mm -hmm. it is clear in the law that only residuals ends up in sanitary landfills. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, would you imagine uh, biodegradable, which is the leftovers, ihahalo mo roon sa recyclable at ihahalo mo rin sa residual. Contaminated lahat yan. It all ends up in the sanitary landfill. Mm -hmm. But if you can uh, maximize no, the uh, order of the law, Uh, basically, ang mag-end uh, up na lang sa ating sanitary landfill is a maximum of 30%. Okay. Kung 30% po yan, di imagine nyo, di ilang taon pa yung itatagal ng ating sanitary landfill. Right. Pero there's also a question on, uh, you know, yung, yun nga, saan mo ilalagay sanitary landfill? Yes, tama uh, po. The kayo. law ngayon, yes. the law provides only for a sanitary land, landfill, di ba? And then, merong mga, of course, may mga mm -hmm. efforts for renewables, di ba? Mm -hmm. Yung basura, eh, re-recycle mo siya. Mm -hmm. And then, gagawin mong renewable source of energy, yeah. for example. But these are far and few in between, Yusek. Tama po kayo. Oo. Dyan. Tapos, ang naging problema ng uh, uh, LG, LGU, pinag-usapan nga natin, not everybody can afford, but you said you have also um, some uh, recommendations of, 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 uh, for that. So, anyway. if we'll talk, uh, talk about the 10-year solid waste management plan, mm -hmm. kadalasan po, nagbubulahan lang po, yung uh, local government tsaka yung National Solid Waste Management Commission na nag-re-review uh, niyang plan nila. No po? Mm -hmm. Kaya ang ginagawa namin, we talk straight to them, being also the alternate of the secretary in the National Solid Waste Management mm -hmm. Commission, ako po ang umupong chairman. No, okay. po? We, yes. uh, for the existence of the uh, uh, Solid Waste Management Commission, uh, for seven years they've been passing this 10-year Solid Waste Management Plan. Eh, seven months lang po natin, nalagpasan po natin yung achievements, achievements nila. No po? Uh -huh. And uh, umabot tayong as high as 568% increase in the approvals. No? So saan kayo nag-succeed where others have failed? Well, uh, nag-succeed po tayo dahil uh, tinanggal po natin yung tinatawag natin yung redundancy ng uh, process wherein may TWG, tapos pagarating doon sa executive committee ang magtatanong eh yung TWG ng TWG rin. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is I changed it uh, you of course the process. Yes, I streamlined the process by means of uh, dividing the the M bank into three groups uh, calling it an executive committee mm -hmm. for them na mag-decide na on their level then formality na lang doon sa M bank but we still have the right to scrutinize if we see something wrong in the 10-year solid waste management plan. Oo. But sad to say, hindi naman yung plan ang problema natin. Ang problema natin yung implementation. That's right. Dahil yung plan, papel lang yan eh. Oo. But as of now, when I talk to mayors, I try to see to it that I relay the message telling them na what you're doing is not a plan. It is a contract between you and the Filipino people. Mm -hmm. So, ano man yung isulat mo dyan is self-incriminating. So anong ibig sabihin no? may ibig meron, sabihin, meron naman ano uh, meron meron namang effect sa mga mayors. Meron no 'yon. Ibig sabihin, wag mo kaming bubulahin diyan sa ginagawa mo dahil Otherwise, otherwise kakasuhan ka namin. Okay. You may know, may, ano. may nakasuhan na ba kayo, you say? Ah, marami na po. Marami Aba, na po. Yun, uh, oh, oh. yung mga may open dump site po lalo na uh, mga kinakasuhan po natin. Mm -hmm. And immediately kapag inaksyonan ho ng ombudsman 'yan, hindi na ho darating ng Sandigan Bayan automatic one year suspension, suspension po. Suspension na kaagad sa kanila. Opo. Okay, so that's uh, very harsh. Enough for them to realize that they have to follow. Yes, opo. Uh -oh. But Pero, uh, bigyan ho natin sila nung ano naman, ika nga yung uh, Benefit of the doubt, no? Mm -hmm. Eh, kawawa rin naman ho yung local government. Okay. Sinasabi po sa batas na bawal na po yung open dump site. 
Well, naunawaan po natin yun dahil nga sa ating kalikasan. But sad to say, sinabi na kailangan palitan ng sanitary landfill. Oo nga eh. Yun mm. na nga yung tatanong ko sa iyo, Yusef. Mm. Because, you know, in reality, pag pumunta ka sa mga probinsya, hindi naman lahat yan mayayaman. No, Not po. everybody can afford. I mm. asked you nga earlier during the break and uh, how much is, uh, you know, to put up one sanitary landfill. Yeah. And when you said basically it's around on the average about 30 million, tama ba? Yes, tama eh, po yung ko, category eh, yung, one po. Eh yung iba nga, hindi, hindi nga makapagpatayo ng 10 million worth na project. Mm -hmm. What about a 30 million worth na project tama also? So, paano natin susolusyonan yan? Sa batas ba yan? Dapat ba DENR yan? Dahil hindi kaya ng L ibang LGU yan. Ano po ba? So, uh, ganito po, rather than... Uh, keep waiting for the local government to act on it. Uh, and they cannot. Yes, uh, we in the DNR immediately came up with the proposal sa ating uh, legislative body to fund the uh, sanitary landfills for the LGUs. These are clustered sanitary landfills uh, wherein uh, 248 congressional districts will be given one uh, sanitary landfill each. No? Mm -hmm. uh, ito po yung tinatawag na category one, yes. wherein uh, based on our study, it could uh, withstand at least uh, three years na mapagtatapunan nung clustered. No? Let's say mm -hmm. five municipalities, basta't malapit siya, wag lang lumagpas ng 40 kilometers. Okay, so let's lugar. say in my district... Um, in Pangasinan, eh, walo yung bayan namin. Paano yun? Well, kung walo po yung bayan nyo, hahanap po tayo na strategic area dyan na pwedeng tayoan ng sanitary landfill. Mm -hmm. So, always remember, there's always resistance, no? Mm -hmm. People don't like sanitary landfills, no? Um, of course, yeah. yes, yeah, I understand. Yeah, dahil sasabihin, mabaho, dadaan dito, ganun. Oo. But, if it is well-maintained, I don't think merong magre-reklamo. Mm -hmm. And if cases are being filed already against their... Uh, government uh, officials, definitely, people say, sige na nga, kaysa naman makulong ang mayor ko. Mm -hmm. So, yun po yung nakikita natin. And yet, it, will, uh, it can also be uh, income generating for the LGU that will host the sanitary landfill. Ang mangyari po, sagot nila yung lupa, sagot po ng, uh, ng national, yung pong uh, infrastructure at matapos po gawin ito, ito turn over po ito sa NRDC, yung pong uh, uh, business arm ng uh, DNR mm -hmm. para naman po proteksyonan yung sanitary landfill na if in case nagpalit-palit yung mayor, hindi po maapektuhan yung pong sanitary landfill. Alam mm -hmm. nyo po naman ang, ang politika po natin oh, dito napakagrabe. Oh, nga eh. Kung kaya't yung national po ang hahawak po niyan till the end of time para masiguro natin na maging sustainable ito. And you said it does make sense that the national, the agency itself will be the one to handle it and be on top of it. Kasi yes. At the, at the end of the day, like I said, di ba, kayo nga dapat yung magpopondo niyan, eh, di ba? Katulad sa ibang ahensya, when you talk about the projects, di ba? Para kahit papano, meron tayong uh, uh, fighting chance okay. na mag-survive ma oh, mag mm -hmm. at saka magkaroon ka, makakomply ka, hindi Tama ba? Tama po kayo dyan. Oh. Dahil, uh, again, madalas po nagkakaroon ng problema sa basura dahil sa politika. Ganun ba? Oo, uh -huh. Kadalasan po yan ang nangyari. Hindi ko yata alam yan. Uh -huh. Bakit, pag, bakit pag ganun? Pagupunong mayor, pagupunong mayor, ginawan niya ng magandang sanitary landfill or ginawan niya ng magandang tapunan ng basura. Isasara. Pag, bago, naman dar, bago naman dumating yung isa, ikakampanya kaya bumabaho ang bayan natin dahil sa basura ang itinayo ng mayor niyo. Nung natalo, umupo yung bagong mayor, pinasara. pinasara. Pero wala naman siya tatapunan. Walang kapalit. Tatapunan kapalit. naman siya ng open dam site. Right. Which is Oo. mali po. Tama. At marami na nga kayong kamong hinuli dyan opo, because of opo, that, di ba? Yung violations na ganyan, Tama hindi ba? Pero what is your um, like goal uh, to be able to, katulad nga ninyo, to be able to put up um, uh, sanitary landfills in uh, nationwide? I mean, sa buong Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. Eh kasi yun yung target natin eh, 248. And that's a uh, very... That's uh, not enough. Oh, oh. That's but not enough. We need about 1,700. But still, that's a very big mandate for Malaki you guys. Po, oh, po, po, so, po. ano sa palagay ninyo? Meron ka bang goal sa palagay mo pag natapos ba yung termino ng presidente natin? Eh, at least yung 248 na yun, eh, matatapos? Yes. Uh, ang nakikita, May pondo na ba kayo? Well, wala pa wala po. Pa pero eh. this will be for next year. Uh -oh. But uh, sa nakikita po natin, ito yung kailangan natin i-address. Emergency po itong situation na to. Yes. Kailangan po i-address natin. 
this is also a band-aid solution. Mm -hmm. Bakit po? Kapag napuno po sa sanitary landfill, yes. Oh, okay. Kapag napuno po yan, dihahanap ka naman, Correct. gagawa ka na naman. Oh, okay. So, ito po, eh, temporary. Pero eh, bakit po sinabi oh. kong 3 years? Oh, oh. Po, pumasok na po yung mga technology. We have this waste to energy. We have some, yes, uh, yes. The, the harvesting of methane and everything. Lahat po yan, welcome po yan. And these sanitary landfills will serve as their uh, feedstock na po. Uh, kung ano man yung technology na papasok, papapasokin po natin dyan, private or uh, government, papasok po dyan. And yun po ang magiging bodega nila, doon nila kukunin yung gagamitin nilang basura bilang panggatong nila o ano paman, yun po ang gagawin. But again, with all these technologies, we will assure the people that there will be no laws that will be violated, especially on the Clean Air Act. Yung oh, po yung kinakatakutan yes. kasi nila dahil uh, ika nga, eh, yung Clean Air Act nga naman, eh, kapag sinunog mo yung basura, eh, paglabas niyan, eh, usok naman, sisirain mo naman ng air. Hindi po namin papayagan yan. Mm -hmm. it, it should be within the standard of the Clean Air Act, which is point one. Okay, yung point one lang po na nanogram, yun lang po ang pinapayagan. Oo nga, tama naman yun actually. And I think, you know, at this time, because of the new technology, di naman din, I'm sure naisip na nila yung kabuoan yes. na ganyan. Tama diba? po, pero may problema na naman po tayo dyan. Oo nga, sa ano batas, naman yung problema? Ang problema po natin, sinasabi po sa batas, is segregation at source. Segregation Apo. at source. So, dihiniwalay so, mo. O, oh, teka muna. Hmm. Um, Yusek, bago mo ikwento sa amin yan, we will be right back for a break. Stay with us. The Philippines has been around for centuries. Malayo na rin ang narating natin. But back then, the way of life has been mostly analog. Did you know that you need to take a boat from Cavite in order to go to Manila? Yes. Ganon ang takbo ng buhay dati. You need to send a letter to the United States? Sure. Pero aabutin ka ng isang buwan bago matanggap ang iyong liham. Kailangan mong tumawag sa bahay o sa iyong kaibigan? Many ways to do that. Pwede ka maghulog ng tatlong 25 sa payphone or use that vintage rotary phone na most likely 6 digits lang ang landline number. Forget about email. Telex at fax machine ang mode of communication for business. You want to listen to that one song of your favorite band on repeat? Sorry, pero kailangan mong i-rewind ang cassette tape. Buong album naman ang kailangan mong bilhin, kahit iisang kanta lang ang gusto mo doon. But things change, and we as a race progress. The world is getting small. We are now a traveling population. Why? Because travel is now cheap. Our friends are across the world because our form of communication is now borderless. Time zones are now meant to serve as a guide and not as a limitation. We can buy things from the comfort of our homes. Nasanay na tayo sa convenience because why not? It is the price of development and the glimpse of our future. Have you imagined the future? How do you think it will look like? Driverless cars? Yes, autonomous driving will happen. Robots replacing low-value processes done by humans? Tama ka dyan. Paying for your groceries using digital currency? Very realistic. Materials being 3D printed instead of ordering? Yes, we are indeed a progressive race. And technology plays a vital and crucial part of it. How will this affect our lives? Kailangan ba natin itong matutunan? Mahirap ba itong aralin? Or kaya naman? How can our nation take advantage of these advancements? All of these can be understood and learned Tayo ng matuto para umunlad, nandito na ang Abante. Progress through technology. Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. We are now on the last stretch of our episode for tonight. And our guest uh, is still Undersecretary Benny Antiporda. And of course, pinutul kita kanina, Yusek, ano? Pero ngayon, ituloy mo na ang iyong kwento. Sige. Well, yung tungkol sa problema natin sa batas, no? it, said, uh, it was said in the law na kailangan magkaroon ng at-source segregation. No po? Kapag hiniwalay mo ngayon yung uh, mga plastic, ito po yung mga highly combustible materials. Mm -hmm. No po? Yan yung hiniwalay mo. So, ano matitira? Mga residual. Mm -hmm. Yung residual, kapag ginamit mo sa waste to energy, there, there's a big possibility na bababa yung BTU. Yung init po niya, 
Mm -hmm. po, kasi kung nandiyan lahat yan, halo-halo at may highly combustible materials, automatic tataas yung temperature niya, yung yes. BTU niya. Uh -huh. Pag tumaas po yan, bababa yung dioxin and furans. So, maliit yung possibility na magkaroon ng pollution. Kapag bumaksak po yung temperatura niyan, tataas yung dioxin and furans. And that is a problem. It will poison our air. Mm -hmm. So, yun po... Uh, How do you address po, that? Eh, batas po ang mag a yan. Kung kaya nakikita po natin na can't hindi... Can't the ENR regulations uh, help solve that? Uh, yes, uh, we can help solve that. But definitely, it is not that 100% doable. No po, we need to uh, amend the law mm -hmm. or come up with a new law that will... Uh, address this problem on the waste to energy project. And did you already recommend to Congress uh, these yes, things? Yes, uh, we have uh, mm -hmm. recommended uh, all these things to Congress and uh, we're just waiting no, uh, for them to come up with the new law uh, about the uh, waste to energy. No, mm -hmm. there's uh, uh, Actually, some few days ago, I attended the hearing headed by uh, the uh, Committee, of, uh, Committee on Energy, uh, Sherwin Gachalian, mm -hmm. and uh, yun na sa Committee on uh, Local Government kay uh, Senator Tolentino. Okay. So, nag-attend ako sa kanila. Ito nga ho yung pinag-usapan, ah, so yung exactly... waste to energy. Okay, so, yeah, so na... napakaganda po, tuloy-tuloy naman. But, uh, please bear with us. Uh, your government is doing its best to come up with the best technology for the country And to those people who are against the uh, burning, no? Kasi ito, hindi naman direct burning. Uh, we're, we're encouraging pyrolysis and uh, gasification. Which means? Which means hindi siya direct burning. Mm -hmm. E contra pa rin po. Yung mm -hmm. incineration kasi yung kinokontra nila, eh, no? Mm -hmm. But again, uh, it's... But there are uh, some countries that have successfully yes. been running incineration. Yes, and based on the uh, decision of the Supreme Court, it says that as long as it is within the standards of the Clean Air Act, hindi siya illegal. That's, no? Kasi that, that, yeah, ang ina-address lang naman nitong uh, pagbabawal ng incinerator is the dioxin and furans. So, uh, you mean you are, the agency is pushing for um, incinerators? No, also? we're not pushing for that. We're opening the gate for okay. everybody, for all the technologies mm -hmm. to come in for so, us pwede to na have ngayon. a better future. Pwede na ngayon. Well, yes, pwede na po. Technically, Magtayo ng incinerator. No, not incinerator po. But uh, yung kung uh, waste to energy project. Correct, waste to energy. Po. Opo. Pero hanggang yung incineration. Dun, hanggang, hanggang dun lang muna tayo. Well, uh, there's still some uh, argument about mm -hmm. that. But basically, uh, based on law, uh, on the uh, decision of the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. it's not illegal. Okay, sige. So, ibang topic naman tayo, Yusek. Opo. Napakalaki pala ng uh, problema sa basura, no? Ang laki po. Oo, eh, no? eh, hindi ka naman, kamo, niwala ka namang uh, background sa uh, basura Well, before, we just use the common sense, no? Yung ika nga, eh, layman's term lang. Tama. Hindi ho natin kailangan pag-aralan ng batas hindi para sabihin ayusin mo yun. Ano? Opo, opo. <laughs> Napakarami pong nagdaan na PhD riyan at mga doctorate degree o ano pang degree dyan. Pero, again, ito pa rin yung basura. Pero we still have pong, the same problem. Ang inyo oh. pong lingkod, eh, isang basurero lamang. Pero I know I can do Noko, it. excuse Apo. me, Yusek, sabi nga nila, may pera sa basura, ha? <laughs> so, hindi lang yan, lalo na sa mga LGU. Yun nga po Isa yung masakit, sa eh. tinitignan nila, Yun nga po masakit, oh. eh. Yung, yung pera sa basura, sa basura, inuuna lang po nila yung pera, pero yung basura, nakalimutan po. Oo nga, Kaya so po, dapat enforcement yes, na naman. Ama po kayo okay, dyan. so Yusek, eto, I think this can be our last uh, issue before we close, no? Eh, yung mga dumping ng garbage ng ibang bansa sa Pilipinas. Kasi ang pinaka malaking recent case natin before was of course yung galing sa Canada, hindi ba? Pero hindi lang diyan eh, di ba? Apart yes. from that, marami pang iba eh na nangyayari ngayon eh. So, how do you address this issue? Well, uh, I've uh, I've uh, proposed to the good secretary mm -hmm. uh, department administrative order that will ban all at uh, Moratorium. A moratorium on all waste-related imports. Ibig mo sabihin, okay. wala pa ngayon? Wala pa po. Uh, Even if we had this big issue on uh, yes. yung Canadian yes. na containers that came yes. here and then became waste? Opo. Uh, kaya po ngayon, eh, binamadali nga po natin, yung lahat po ng waste-related imports, gaya na lang po ng uh, bibigyan ko ng sample, oh, oh. yung mga surplus na TV na dumarating na po. Okay. Alam nyo, oh, dami niyan dito sabihin, sa... sabihin na ho natin surplus yan. No hmm. po? Pero out of 100 pieces, definitely mga 20-30 dyan sira. Mm -hmm. no po? 
saan nila itatapon yan? Correct. No po? Yung paghinugasan mo yan, yung tubig yan, saan dumadalo yan? Tama. No po? Meron ka bang uh, treatment facility? I don't think so. Right. So, since that is the situation, i Ire-regulate po natin yan isa-isa mm -hmm. para ho hindi tayo magka-problema. Now, hindi ho natin pagbabawal, kundi iaayos lang natin. Mm -hmm. Doon naman po sa nagsasabing recyclables, yung parating namin. Okay, recyclables, ang kapinap. But kapag lumagpas yan sa benchmark namin, mm -hmm. definitely, basura na yan, hindi na recyclables yan. Right. So, ang gagawin po natin, bago ka mabigyan ng accreditation o ng permit na makapag-import, kailangan mm -hmm. ho may band ka. Ano yung band? Let's say a 3 million band, sa tingin ko it's sufficient enough. Yung 3 million band mo nandyan bago ka mag-import. Pag nakita kong basura, yung 3 million mo gagamitin ko. Will be forfeited. Pagbalik nung basura, papunta sa ibang bansa. Ah, ibabalik pag, mo sa pinanggalingan. Yes, uh, back to sender po siya. Uh -huh. Ngayon no, pag binalik mo roon, dihingi ka na naman ng permit, mag-import ka. O dilagyan mo uli ako ng 3 million para ba babayaran ko na naman kapag nauli kita. Actually, dapat nga, kung ganyan, dapat dadagdagan natin yung bond. Kasi, Opo. apart from yung uh, gagastusin pabalik doon, wala namang penalty doon sa nag-ship Hindi, doon. may violation pa rin po yun. At Oo. may demanda ho ah, yun. May kasama Opo, na yun. May kasama na demanda po yun. So, iba pa rin ho yung uh, setup na yun. But this is to secure our country. Would you imagine itong Canada ways na to? Opo. Hanggang ngayon po, wala tayong... Uh, lugyo tayo rito. Ang yes. tagal na nagstay stay nito sa ating mga oh, pier. Oo, eh. gano'n katagal. Hindi binayaran yung ating demurahe. Lahat Wala. hindi yung binayaran. Oo, tapos pinasok pa dito at nakarating pa sa probinsya. Eh. Opo, ba? tama Oo. po yun. So, napakalaking trabaho, napaka... Eh, yung pagod lang ho na, na ibalik natin. But uh, happy to say na ibalik po natin ito. Right. Uh, hindi ko na ipapaliwanag on cam. Yes, pero oh. madugong bakbakan po nangyari dito. I am sure. I inangat po namin ang bandera ng Pilipinas kung saan na halos magkaduroan pa nung nag-uusap po kasama yung mga dayuhan. Alam mo, Undersecretary, alam ko yan kasi itong issue na ito ay uh, ilang taon na rin eh. Di ba? Yes. Tumawid na nga sa administrasyon na ito eh. Di ba? Oh. And again, so, I can tell you na ang nangyari pong ito ay hindi po kasalanan talaga, totally ng DNR. Ito po ay kasalanan ng politika na naman. Kaya oh, ho hindi ito na ibalik Ikaw ka naman, na. Yusek, naman, Opo. lahat naman politika sinasabi mo eh, di ba? Opo, po oh, For example, yung scrap metal. O, oh, hindi ba? Sabi nila, ini-import yan, big time. Malaking pera dyan sa scrap metal na yan, di ba? Pero dahil recyclable siya, di ba? But Opo. not all of them are classified as recyclable. Well, uh, meron, ba? Pong, meron po talaga nagpapalusot na ganyan. So again, this is a waste-related import. Mm. No po? Kapag nagkaroon ng moratorium, ilalatag mo yung guidelines sa kanila. Alam nyo, kasi tapos na yung mga panahon nung unang, uh, nung unang mga administrasyon na kung saan gagawa ng guideline, bubutasan, lalagyan ng loophole. Yes. Para ika nga, kapag merong, ano, merong magkakaso o ano man mangyayari, mm -hmm. eh, may technical sila lang sagot. So, ibig sabihin sa customs, uh, mas, mas uh, strict ng implementasyon niya? Well, ganun, eh, po, mangyayari. ganun po ang mangyayari. Mangyayari? Uh, o, oh. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa nangyayari. Hindi so, ho. Uh, actually, nangyayari po ngayon, pero oh, okay. bantayan po ang nangyayari ngayon. Pero iba ho yun talagang may guidelines na from 1 to 10, pasunod mo to. You mean dati hmm. walang guidelines na ganyan? Well, may guidelines po, pero may loophole. Yun yung sinasabi mo, okay. uh, ginawa yung guidelines na yon para malusutan mo. Tama po. Oo. So ngayon, inayos niyo yung guidelines Oo, na yun. Aayusin po natin ng aayusin para ho talaga maging tailor-fitted po siya para sa bansa po natin. So meron ka bang timeline dyan, Yusek? Because well, this is under your... Well, as possible. We only have two years and a half left to go. And, That's uh, right. I don't think we can, we, we can afford to waste any single minute. Mm -hmm. So ngayon po, uh, talaga ang bakbakan po yung labanan dito and mm -hmm. uh, uh, natatakot po rin kasi kami. Baka ho kasi hindi na ho tayo magkaroon ng presidente na katulad ng ating Pangulong uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Mm -hmm. Kung kaya't talaga ho pinagbubuti namin ito dahil matapos man ho yung kanyang termino, inaayos po natin ang DNR. Actually, um, Undersecretary, I think the best, the better way to look at this uh, would be yung inyong mga plans and policies that you put in place now uh, should have a validity of a more long term at hindi base din sa mga administrasyon so that even if we change administrations in the future, it will still hold, hindi ba? Well, tama po kayo mm -hmm. but uh, ang kinaganda po rito, siguro naman po, hindi naman lingit sa kaalaman ng iba na ang inyo pong lingkod ay 
media practitioner po. Correct, yes. Well, matapos po yung termino kong to, eh hawak ko po lahat ng guidelines na yan at ibabalik ko sa kanila yan kapag hindi ho nila ipatupad yan sa susunod na mga administrasyon pa. That's right. Okay, so um, finally, uh, Yusek, uh, you said two years na lang. Two, kasi yung and a half years na yun, wala na halos kayong magagawa dun okay. eh, di ba? So, in the remaining two years, ano naman ang mga goals mo Uh, especially in your uh, department as uh, head of uh, this uh, yung uh, pambansang basurero, mm -hmm. ano pa ang iyong mga goals na gusto mong makita bago ka mag-step down? Well, unang-una yung uh, completion ng uh, 10 years solid waste management plan. 10 years eh, hanggang 3 yeah. years lang yung sanitary landfill mo, Yusek. Paano yan? No, uh, mm -hmm. okay lang po yung Kasi ho, yung 3 years na sinasabi natin is minimum, no? Uh -oh. uh, ito po yung minimum wherein kapag ang kaya extend. lang ni local government is uh, 1 hectare, pwede na ho yun. Depende Now, kung sa kaya ng 5 hectares, they better. can uh, come up with the uh, category 4 na tumatagal naman po ng 10 years. I see. No okay, so, so that's one uh -huh. that you want to see happen. Yes, okay. and uh, of course, yung pong uh, disiplina po ng bawat Pilipino, yung po yung ating po talagang uh, nais na Naku, mabago. Yusek, alam mo, hindi lang sa politika yan, eh, yung sa disiplina yan. Sabi nga nila, ako galing po ako ng kongreso, no? ang sabi nga nila, you cannot legislate that. Eh. You can legislate everything else except that. So, paano naman yung sa tingin mo na magsasaksid ka where the others also have failed? Well, uh, one thing I can say, if I will not start it, who will? No po, uh, Ibig sabihin, hindi nila sinimulan dati, Yusef? Uh, they, they didn't start it eh. Kasi Talaga? bakit to? Dahil That's kung sinimulan nila, di sana ang dami nakakulong ngayon. Oo diba nga. Po? Well, Oo. No, ang inyong Tama. lingkod, eh, hindi naman ho sa pag-aangat ng sariling bangko. Eh, kahit na ho kakampi naming mayors, eh, dinidemanda ko po, kinakasuhan. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman ho para awayin sila, kundi para gisingin sila at sabihin na it's about time for you to change. Yes. Because eto na ang bagong administrasyon. Tama. Ako po, ako po hindi politikong tao, pero ako po ay merong pananaw sa buhay na kailangan pong magkaroon ng magandang kinabukasan ng ating bayan. I, and, uh, you know, I think all of us would share that uh, vision, that dream. And uh, I hope that uh, you are able to fulfill all these lofty goals and vision that you have in the remaining two years. Mm -hmm. So, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Undersecretary Benny, for uh, being with us here. And uh, we hope that you will give us an update um, pretty soon on this. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit sa ating guest ngayong gabi, si Undersecretary Benny Antiporda ng DENR. Dito po nagtatapos ang latest episode ng Hot Seat. Ako po ang inyong lingkod, Kim Bernardo Lokin. Magbabalik ang Hot Seat next week.